Welcome to the Meb Favor Show, where the focus is on helping you grow and preserve your wealth. Join us as we discuss the craft of investing and uncover new and profitable ideas, all to help you grow wealthier and wiser. Better investing starts here. Meb Faber is the co-founder and chief investment officer at Cambria Investment Management. Due to industry regulations, he will not discuss any of Cambria's funds on this podcast. All opinions expressed by podcast participants are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinion of Cambria Investment Management or its affiliates. For more information, visit cambriainvestments.com. Today's episode has the ominous title, Red Light. Let's begin. When the facts change, I change my mind. What do you do? Though there's debate about who originally said this, or if the phrasing is accurate, popular opinion gives credit to John Maynard Keynes. In any case, it's relevant today because the facts have changed for investors, and that points towards an important question each of us would be wise to answer as soon as possible. What are you going to do now? I'll explain exactly what's changed in a moment. First, let's establish some context. The two primary pillars upon which we build portfolios are value, and then on the other side, momentum and trend. Specifically, Our main value framework is the shareholder yield strategy that invests in stocks trading at what we consider to be attractively low valuations relative to their price, and then also distributing their cash flows to shareholders. On the other hand, we implement global momentum and trend strategies. It seeks out the highest global momentum assets that are also in an uptrend, regardless of valuations. Sometimes, value and trend tend to line up. My favorite, a cheap investment in an uptrend. But many times, value and trend disagree. That's been the case for some time now with the broad U.S. stock market. By just about every valuation metric, the S&P 500 is very expensive, yet still on an uptrend. Note this piece was originally written at the beginning of 2022. We would say every valuation metric, but it's unwise to speak in absolutes in the investing world. Though the inflated valuation aspect of this type of market condition can result in anxiety for investors, historically, this environment still generates positive broad market returns. After all, uptrend is driving the market. You might think of this market environment as being a yellow light, suggesting caution. That's because the next quadrant, expensive in a downtrend, is a full-on bright red light because it can wreak havoc on a portfolio. When the market sours and enters this expensive downtrend condition, gains that accrued over quarters and years can evaporate rapidly. Just look at the most recent flash bear market in 2020. It took the S&P 500 Only 22 days to fall 30% from its prior high. Historically speaking, markets have performed poorly when in a downtrend, characterized by higher volatility and drawdowns. So returning to the top of this article, what's changed today? You guessed it. Trend has officially gone from up to down. This suggests investors need to think hard about how they're positioned. What the changing trend means exactly. There are many ways to measure a trend. For our purposes today, we're looking at the 10-month simple moving average, which is similar to the often referenced 200-day simple moving average. This is generally considered a long-term trend indicator. When prices are north of this long-term trend line, many investors consider the market to be in a bullish uptrend. The converse is equally true. When the S&P 500 price falls below its 10-month simple moving average, we see that the equivalent of the curve in the chart will attach to the show note leaks, peaking and turning south. We measure this by looking at the 10-month simple moving average of the S&P 500 total return series at the end of every month. And often it's very close, but SPY, which we're using the ETF, just closed below its trend line for the first time since 2022. Again, you can go to the blog post to see what this looks like. Now, does this mean the stock market is about to implode? No. Or, rather, there's no guarantee that'll happen. Trend indicators on U.S. stocks have experienced many whipsaws and head fakes over the past decade. That's happened when a market drop triggered what appeared to be a new downtrend, only to reverse and rip higher. Plenty of trend investors have fallen for such pump fakes, resulting in whipsaw losses. No market signal is perfect, but we'd be very foolish to ignore what the trend is telling us right now. What then can you do? Investing in expensive downtrend market conditions. First, let's illustrate what we're trying to avoid. Attached on the blog post is a chart of the S&P 500's CAPE ratio dating back to the 1800s. The CAPE ratio stands for the Cyclically Adjusted Price-to-Earnings Ratio. Rather than a traditional price-to-earnings ratio, CAPE stretches earnings over a 10-year period. This is done to smooth out business cycle fluctuations. As we record this, the CAPE ratio is around 32, despite the correction we're undergoing. This puts today market conditions deep in the overvalued category. Translation, watch out! 
forward-looking 10-year S&P 500 returns. So what does that mean in practical, actionable terms? First, you don't have to invest all your money 100% in stocks. We often say the best way to hedge risk is not to take the risk in the first place. No one says you must invest your entire portfolio in equities. So instead of 100% stocks, investors could own 80 or 60% or even less with the remainder in cash or bonds. Second, you don't have to limit yourself to only U.S. markets. We feel this choice is a no-brainer. We've spoken often over the past few years about how moving into cheaper foreign equities can be a wise choice in a world dominated by more expensive U.S. shares. Third, you could add liquid alternatives. Think things like real assets, like commodities and real estate. Our global momentum and trend strategy is heavily invested in real assets today. If inflation remains elevated, real assets could be a big beneficiary. We see this as a benefit for investors because the strategy itself adapts to changing market conditions, freeing the investor from having to keep track of shifting markets and reposition his or her portfolio manually. Incorporating strategies like trend following and managed futures or long short and market neutral equity can also help to hedge equity risks if equity markets decline. Now, most investors are familiar with these options, but there's a fourth one. And while two, it is also defensive. If used tactically, it can also be an offensive strategy. To be clear, it's not for everyone. It's probably also not for all the time. That said, when used wisely and strategically, it has the ability not only to help hedge a portfolio during drawdowns, but positions the portfolio to potentially profit from it. We're referencing our tail risk strategy. How tail risk might be a helpful component to your portfolio. Our tail risk strategy invests in a ladder puts in the U.S. stock market, paired with long positions in U.S. government bonds. A put option is an option contract, giving the owner the right, but not the obligation, to sell a specified amount of an underlying security at a specified price within a specified time frame. The basic idea is that if the market, or your stocks, roll over, a put option you previously purchased will enable you to either sell your equities at the predetermined strike price, play defense, or if you don't own the underlying investment, you'll be able to profit if the underlying market price falls, therein increasing the value of the put option you own, playing offense. The portion of our strategy investing in U.S. government bonds is engineered to spin off the cash flow from those bonds to help fund the cost of the puts. In a normal rising stock market, this means tail risk may not be appropriate for the portfolio of the average investor. However, when downward volatility strikes, it could make far more sense. The challenge is, how do you know when downward volatility is more likely to strike? Well, perfect timing is impossible. But we do believe the yellow to red trend indicator we've detailed today suggests that market is more likely to experience significant drawdowns than before. Wrapping up, the S&P is now officially closed a month with its price below its 200-day moving average. That's a long-term red light warning sign. Given your unique financial situation, how will you respond? If you believe that hedging your long U.S. stock exposure or even taking a bearish view of the stock market is the right call, tail risk could be appropriate for you. Podcast listeners will post show notes to today's conversation at mebfaber.com forward slash podcast. If you love the show, if you hate it, shoot us feedback at themebfabershow.com. We love to read the reviews. Please review us on iTunes and subscribe to the show anywhere good podcasts are found. Thanks for listening, friends, and good investing.